Bradford in West Yorkshire, home to one of the largest Muslim communities in England. Bradford is also home to Nabwood School, an 11 to 18 secondary with 960 pupils, 70% of whom are Muslim. Mick Walker is the head of RE and has taught here for 15 years. This programme will follow Mick as he teaches a Year 10 class about peace and conflict in Islam and we'll see how he handles a potentially difficult situation. I think a lot of teachers who teach RE are not specialist teachers of RE and they can sometimes feel a little uncertain, a little uneasy perhaps, about dealing with certain controversial topics and issues which they feel might be very sensitive for a non-Muslim teacher to deal with. Obviously we want to know the wrong things and the good things about Islam. There's always two sides to a story. So, um, so I think, yeah, it's a good thing if they do teach us about jihad and stuff. Personally, I think it's good to talk about terrorism and controversial issues to get them out of the way and discuss them and maybe it could be a way of sorting things out. I don't think there's nothing too controversial or too sensitive. Uh, the world needs to know that. Where Islam is not a hateful religion, and it's good to see that most people understand that. I think people are very concerned uh, about uh, not causing uh, offence, not causing upset by raising issues, which, in my opinion, it's more important for these issues to be actually aired and for people to actually articulate worries, fears, and anxieties, because often that's when they're dispelled. So this morning's lesson, OK, as you can see from the objectives there, is, is to do with the idea of peace and conflict and what do we understand uh, in relation to Muslim attitudes to peace and conflict, with particular reference to these objectives. First one being able to assess how the media represents Islam and to what extent this encourages negative stereotypes of Muslims as violent extremists. The second objective is to know and understand what Muslims mean by the term jihad. And finally, to have a balanced understanding of Muslim attitudes to peace and conflict. OK, so those are the three aims that we're looking at in this morning's learning. I'm not a Muslim, as you know. You are, right? We need to understand what it means to be a Muslim and what the term Muslim means, OK? So to start us off with then, let's have somebody who's prepared to put their hand up and say, what does the word Islam mean? Usman. Submission to the will of God. Submission to the will of God. And it's not submission to anything but to Allah. Because if we're talking about Islam, we're talking about an Islamic term, which is Allah, isn't it? We're not using the term God. OK, we're now going to move on to look at some media images associated with Islam. In groups, I'm going to give you each two images. So I want you to write down to what extent these images present a fair and accurate or a biased and unfair image of Islam. Doesn't matter which ones you get. I think it's a bit biased because it's one Muslim, it doesn't mean all Muslims are bad. It's a protest and it's against summer and it looks calm, it doesn't look aggressive at all. Mm. It's like they're protesting for peace or something. Yeah. Look at the way he's wearing the hood as well. Do you think that makes him look a threat? or makes him look peaceful. Threat. Threat. Why does it make him look a threat? Because he doesn't want to be seen. Like, because he's disguising his identity. Yeah. People who are not from that background could be intimidated by that image associating the beliefs with the need to disguise who you are, because that, that might affect what you might do, and also the fact that you're holding a gun, which could be seen as an aggressive thing. And what about this one? They're encouraging people to kill. And they're, like, showing that they're protesting, but they're not showing why they're protesting. They're not doing anything wrong. They're, the but they're saying that they're doing wrong. It's the signs that are violent. This is the peaceful solution first, as yeah. to, opposed to war first. It's a warning. Yeah, it's a bit of a warning. Yeah, you don't give no evidence about Muslims, actually. So it's showing a negative image. Islam in the in the media, so more people think Islam is a, a religion that uh, shows shows you know, violence, violence, not only peace. Yeah, yeah. peace. Is, uh, Islam is peace, and in this picture, it's not showing that it's showing violence. Yeah. I think it's important that schools don't duck the controversial areas of the curriculum and controversial issues. These sorts of images associate again people from a certain faith with acts of terror and destruction, and it means that many people are going to be scared. 
of people who are associated with that sort of behaviour. The important thing is that you're able to, I think, have some sense of authority when you're talking about the religious uh, traditions which they're coming from and how that people from that tradition might respond to some of those controversial issues and to avoid a stereotypical right, view yeah. that everybody from that tradition must have this view on that issue. What I'd like us to do now is to move on to another activity. In groups, use the textbooks provided to help you to answer the following questions. Define clearly the term jihad, not what do some people think the term jihad means, but what is a balanced, fair definition of what jihad means. What does Islam have to say about when and how a war should be fought? And what might be some religious reasons for Muslims being prepared to fight in a conflict or in a war? Okay. That's like for self-defense, isn't it? It must be the last resort. Uh, it must be authorized and led by a Muslim authority. During the activity, one group of pupils gets into a heated debate about the role of jihad. We're showing you a heavily edited version. In Islam, you know, meant to harm the elders and the women and the children, and well, they would just kill lots of people regardless of who they are. So that cannot be causing the minimum amount of suffering. I think the terrorists, like, they're following their own rules, they're not following the Quran, you know, because the Quran clearly states, you know, that you know, you're not supposed to use violence and everything in wars, and it's supposed to be just. So how you can't even class them as Muslims really because they're not following the Quran. So how could they say they're fighting for Islam? when they're going against the rules of it. But you know, um, Muhammad, peace be upon him, he used to fight in wars as well. Yeah, but they were just wars. But how can you classify them as just wars, but women and kids getting killed then as well? He was pure, nothing he could do, right, or anything would, would be wrong. So it had to be just, everything was right. These people are just normal people that are trying to, I don't know what, you know, make, they so they say, make Islam better, you know, trying to... Purify it. Yeah, purify it, but... Is they're not at all, they're just making it worse. I think, I think it's very difficult to talk about uh, controversial views in a classroom. I would take issue with the term wrong views because it's very difficult to decide what view is right and what view is wrong, but I think certainly, yes, there were controversial, controversial views expressed by one of the subgroups within the class at one point during the lesson. They're not dying in the name of Islam. But the people are fighting in the name of Islam. Wait. They think they are, think they, they think they're, they're not. They're well, not, how can you say they're not? Because they're not going by the Quran. They're still, it's still murder. Still, they're still human beings. They still have feelings. If you kill one person in Islam, it's like killing the whole Pull of humani yeah. humanity. A lot of people die every day. Terrorism. You lot call it terrorism. I call it like fight for Islam. Do you, do you think it's good, right? If if someone's like uh, fighting for the religion to kill their own religion, so it's like, if I'm fighting for Islam, I go out and kill my you know Muslim brothers and sisters. But so so you're saying that terrorists kill everyone? They don't like see like. Yeah, it, it's, it's been proven, 9-11. How many, how many Muslims are there? I don't know. There, there must have been... Uh, you can't say there were no Muslims there. People have done wrong, why not just take them with yeah. you? Yeah, but yeah. you don't go straight to heaven, even though they believe it's just war. They're not going to heaven. So they, uh, they're going to hell, they're going straight to the grave. But how can you say you're going to go to hell? Because in the Quran it says committing suicide is a sin. So if I commit suicide, right, I'm going to go to hell. I know that only Allah can, you know, decide when you know, I know um, when and how you're gonna die. If you follow the right rules, you know, and Quran, what Allah said, yeah, and what Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, then nothing can go wrong. This so life's a test. It's a test, and if you struggle, that's good. That's a great a jihad. You're struggling within to find inner no, peace. No, but the thing is, Islam does not imply terrorism. It doesn't imply violence, and it doesn't imply destruction. What you're not getting is this minority that's made it like that. It's not everyone. Can we? Can we just try and? You know, you've got a lot of strong opinions, and that's that's right and proper, right? Okay, and everybody's got a right to their opinion. What we've got to try and do is be able to argue and give reasons which are able to support our opinions. What we're doing at the moment is we're moving slightly away from the focus of the lesson. But what I'd like to try and do is bring it back to what the task was that we started, which has led to the debate we've just been having in the room. Okay, so I'd like us just to focus back on some of these responses that you've given me here, which I think might help to kind of give some clarity to the positions that we're looking at here in, in the debate. I think so it's important like... that the students feel comfortable to actually articulate what their views are on issues of concern and controversy. But I think they also need to be aware that it's important that in the way that they articulate their views, they take into, cons into, into account 
the impact of how they express their views on the feelings of others around them in the group. When you're teaching about a faith to any other students of that faith, you've got to demonstrate in your manner that you respect their faith, that you're sensitive to what they believe to be important. What I would say is when you're working with a class that has a predominance of Muslim students within that class, what you need to be aware of, okay, are basic issues of mutual respect. So remember to, set, to use the term Allah rather than God, because that's being true to the faith that you're studying at that time. Remember to say peace be upon him after mentioning the name of Muhammad or any of the other prophets and explain to the rest of the class that this is a mark of respect, obviously, and not a mark of worship. Physically display within the classroom a copy of their holy book stored in the highest point in the room in recognition of its holy to them and therefore they could see some connection between an ownership between that space where they were learning about their faith and other faiths can I just draw your attention now, please, to the last activity on the bottom of your task sheet? What you've got there is a scenario. A scenario is a made-up situation, OK? And it's deliberately done to try and provoke a kind of open, honest debate amongst yourselves as a group, bearing in mind the work we've done during the lesson this morning. The scenario says, your friend Uthman hears a speaker say, those suicide bombers from the July bombings are in heaven now, it was a good jihad. The questions I want you to look at are, was it jihad, why or why not, and can you explain why suicide bombing is not acceptable Islamically? And I'd like you to put your ideas down together as a group on paper now, please. Yeah, if it was jihad, like, it would cause, like, the least amount of damage, and it wouldn't, like, kill people, it wouldn't kill yourself, because killing yourself is wrong as well. Is it seen as a sin for, for taking their own life? Committing suicide. And they would kill the innocent people who haven't done anything to them? Yeah. So how do, how do as they well know? as themselves. Yeah. How do they know those people that just have protested against the uh, uh, wars or something? The Iraq war, the, the war in Afghanistan? So I don't it's not a we believe that the, the suicide bombers will be in hell now because we believe that killed a lot of innocent civilians who have done nothing wrong. We all know that jihad means a, whole, a holy war. This was not a, a fair or a holy war. It was an unacceptable war because many other people were on the train. I'd just like to take a few examples from around the room just so that we can all look at this together to, to, to round things off. Which group would like to start us off? Thank you. We think that the July bombings, they, that it wasn't jihad because, they, because there was actually no just reason why he was doing it and he was killing so many in, innocent civilians which goes against jihad and because there was, no, um, there, was, there was no Muslim authority there. My experience is that young people are very interested in controversial issues and if we can provide them with spaces where they can articulate their views and they can learn to consider in a balanced way the arguments for and against different courses of action in areas of controversy, then that's really what sets our real light for them. And as far as I'm concerned, if, if we didn't take these issues on in RE, RE would be much the poorer for it and so would their education. <laughs>